Good day to viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Prime Secretary of British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting and another of the 1929 election records. This is Columbia 5346, the Liberal Party. The, no, part 6, the future of British industry. Speech by the Right Honourable T.J. McNamara, ex-Minister for Labour. Here we go. I submit to you a simple and yet all-embracing proposition. You can never get the best and the most out of any system unless the men who have to work it together are well affected one to the other. How can you expect full prosperity and success in industry so long as it is full devil, full baker between capital and labor. Of course, the out-and-out out socialist may say, I'm not concerned to improve the relationships between capital and labor. I think capitalism and the capitalist have got to go. They must give place to a system in which there shall be no private ownership of any of the means of production distribution and exchange. No man shall work for private profit for another, or for himself for that matter. If I dissent from this proposition, it is because I think it fantastically impracticable. And more, I am satisfied that any attempt to apply it would bring the gravest disillusionment to the very people in whose behalf it is preached with such confident assurance. The thing is a complete misfit as applied to human nature. Every mother knows that one of the first things her offspring learns to say is mine. It will take a lot of state socialism to wipe out that impulse. You might as well try to abolish the solar system. Therefore, the incentive and initiative of private enterprise must be maintained, for hearing is the mainspring of human activity. But private op enterprise must be so operated as always to do the fair thing between capital and labor. That many reforms designed to this end stand to the credit of liberalism will not be denied. That much remains to be done is no less true. And the first thing to do is to develop and encourage the round table habit between the employer and his work people. Men must come together to think out and talk out their difficulties and differences rather than to fight them up. And your system must be so planned as to make the workmen realize that the greater prosperity and success of the business is as much a matter of personal, material advantage to him as to the boss, each according to his contribution to the joint undertaking. In a word, the workman must be less of a hireling and more of a partner. Then capital and labor will go forward together with the same objective, the greater success of the business. And that's the liberal industrial policy. Well, there we are, viewers. Hope you enjoyed that. Historically interesting, apparently. Thank you and goodbye.